I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I am filming on today, the Gimoy Walubara Yudinji people. I also wish to acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. Spirit, please help me to cleanse all negative energies, entities and spirits from my body, from my home, from my animals and from my objects so that I may offer clear, honest messages to the groups today. Thank you, Spirit. Hi everyone and welcome to another video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. A hugely massive welcome back to everybody who is returning. It is so lovely to have you all here. I just want to take a quick second to thank each and every one of you for all of your support right here on YouTube. I really appreciate those of you who take the time to watch my videos, let alone interact. Um, it's been a blessing. I'm getting a little sentimental, uh, probably because of the type of video that we're filming today. It's a, definitely a more of a feelings video. Um, but yeah, I've had the pleasure of doing this for nearly four years now, and I'm just definitely very grateful for the fact that I can still be here doing these videos and oh my Lord, don't make me cry. <laughs> We're going to just end it there, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. I know that's a very cliche thing for somebody on the internet to say, but it's just, it's very bizarre, the fact that I get to do this. So thank you so, so much. And I'm excited to do today's reading. So we're doing a Valentine's reading today. I do have a career reading as well that will be up in the next week, hopefully. Um, I wanted to do the Korea reading first, but Valentine's Day is a very specific day, so I had to get that out of the way first. Um, but I've been meaning to do a money reading for a while, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If I remember, I will link it in the video now. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Today's reading is going to be a pick a card reading. As you can see, we're having a look at who wants to be your Valentine, which is pretty cute. It's going to be a little cute reading. I still highly recommend that you practice discernment despite this being a cute, fun reading. Um, definitely bring something to the reading so that you can take notes of what resonates and make a little list of what doesn't resonate as well, just in case it resonates at a later date. This reading, we're going to have a look at who this person is. We're going to have a look at will they ask you to be their Valentine? And we're going to get advice for you as well. There will be an extended reading. An extended reading is how the best way to support me and this channel. So in your extended reading, I'm going to get channeled messages from this person for you. And we're also going to have a look at what your higher self thinks of this person and what your spiritual team thinks of this person as well. Naturally, there'll be more advice in the extended as well. So if you need more clarity, more support, more information and more advice, I highly recommend you check out the extended and it's just a wonderful way to support me in this channel to keep us going. But anyway, that's what we're doing. Let me introduce you to the three groups today as well. Starting with group one over here, you guys have the white fly tarot deck. Here is what the lover's card looks like in this beautiful deck. And this is what the back of this deck looks like. This is an independent deck. So if you like the look of this deck, I highly recommend you check out this artist and support this independent tarot artist as well. So this is group one with the white fly tarot deck. Group two, you will have the Live It The Ghost Tarot deck, another independent deck. Love this deck so, so much. Here's what the Lover's Card looks like in this deck. Here's what the back of this deck looks like. This deck is in French, so I'm going to be working extra hard to get these messages to you while I try to figure out. Now, I'm pretty comfortable with this deck now. But if you feel drawn to this deck, you'll be a part of group two's reading. That was Live at the Ghost Tarot. Group three over here has the trippy. Let me just double check. Trippin' Ride Away Tarot deck. And this is what the lover's card looks like in this beautiful deck. 
I don't think this is an independent artist, but we know that a lot of these artists get commissioned to do their work, so I'm sure they have their own artwork as well. Here's what the back of this deck looks like. If you feel drawn to this deck, this is the Trippin Rider right Waite deck. You'll be a part of group three's reading today. So that is what the three card, uh, decks look like. That's what the three groups will be. Pause the video if you need more time. If you want to intuitively select a group but you need more assistance, stay tuned for my one minute meditation clip that will be playing right after this. It is a guided meditation created to connect you to your intuition so that you can intuitively select a group that you feel most drawn to. Once you've selected a group in whichever weird, wild, wonderful way that you do so, check the timestamps in the description box. There will also be a pinned comment. Click on your group's timestamp and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point, I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with a rested mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number. It may be an object that I showed you. It could be a specific color. It could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome to your reading. If you chose the white fly tarot deck right here then this is going to be your reading today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so lovely to have you all here. We're asking spirit who wants to be your valentine. Now I'm feeling especially connected to my spiritual team for y'all today so I'm hoping to get some really clear specific messages. The letter K came through while I was preparing for your reading so that could be significant to some of you. Um, I feel like that's a nickname though. I don't think it's their name initial. So that's very specific but that might be helpful. Now we're going to have a look at who. Who wants to be group one's valentine please spirit. Tune me into group one's energy. Tune me in to group one's energy. I was going to do a bunch of shuffling off camera and then I was like, you know what? No, I need to get straight into this. So unfortunately, that means that we're going to have a long period of shuffling, but I will be channeling certain messages between. If you want to skip ahead, please do so um, if you're pressed for time. But otherwise, let's figure out who this person is. Spirit, who wants to be group one's valentine? Who wants to be group one's valentine spirit? Can I please get two or three cards from this beautiful deck? Of who wants to be group one's valentine? There's two. Is there anything else they need to know? Thank you, spirit. Oops, that's too much. We'll just take the top one. At the back of the deck is the village. So that tells me that you may share a community with this person. This person feels like somebody that's in your community. I'll see what the other cards show, but this is indicating that they're not very close to you. They want to be closer to you, but you share a community with them. We have the forest. They've had the opportunity to watch you grow. This is also a very mature, responsible person. Um, but there is this energy of people again, like a community. Many of you. 
this person seems to be a part of a group that you participate in or a place where there's a crowd and there may be regulars in that crowd um yeah there's this there's an energy here of like you're a part of something with them there's almost like the word for it is like comrade camaraderie we have the womb somebody could have a connection to russia <laughs> is what's coming through very specific we have the prayer as well so it could be a religious institution doesn't have to be the prayer for me is about devotion conviction and hope so I wonder if this is about like you may know this person from a place where you need to practice those values or where you're seeing each other in that way being very hopeful and devoted there's also this energy of humility I feel like this is quite a like this is somebody that blends into the crowd somebody that is able to just kind of fit in they don't want to stand out they're a part of the group um they're a team player is what spirit's saying with the womb energy here another message that i'm getting is that this is somebody who is very i want to say accommodating like they don't like to leave people they don't want people to be left behind they don't want people to feel like they don't fit in um they're very supportive they're very caring I feel like if somebody was being bullied, this is the person that would stand up and go, hey guys, don't pick on them. And then they would help that person and go, hey, like I'm so-and-so, sorry about that. Don't let it get to your head. Why don't you come and sit with me? Like, But they don't do it to make a show of it. It's like this person is very much a team player and having that, what's the word? Inclusivity is important to this person. Oh, okay. So for some of you, they could have a limp or something too. There's something about them. There's a reason why they are this way is what spirit is saying. There's a reason why they are focused on inclusivity. There could be something about them that or someone close to them that makes them want to be so conscious of making sure that everybody fits in. Let's get some more archetype cards. Who wants to be group one's Valentine spirit? Who is this person? Who wants to be group one's Valentine? Who is this person? We have the artist coming out. And how does group one see this person? You see this person as the addict. And clues around what who this person could be. We have LGBT at the back of the deck. So straight off the cuff, same sex connections are being highlighted, but that's also about somebody who doesn't kind of fit the mold for lack of a better word they stand out the lgbt card just tells me that as much as this person wants to be inclusive there is something about them that makes them stand out from the crowd so who they are is very different to how you see them this is somebody who's very passionate they're very creative they are somebody who is always busy with their hands. They like to do things. They also like to express themselves. But the artist's energies aren't always bold. And I'm not kind of seeing this person as being an extrovert. I'm actually seeing this person as somebody who will only extrovert their personality if they are helping somebody else. Otherwise, they're very happy with blending in in the background. They hope to be invisible in public situations. They hope to just sort of be in the crowd. And this is a friendly person though. So once you kind of make friends with them, they, they do go out of their way to say hello, to acknowledge you. Um, they could be an artist of some sort. 
but I also have a feeling that this person is just a very creative person. And if they are an artist in one type of way, they probably create in another type of way as well. This is the kind of person that probably has like drawings in their room or they have paintings in their home um, or they like to wear clothing that is inspired by their favorite artists or maybe they make their own clothes. Maybe they have their own clothing line or they've um, they sell their own merch in some way. It just feels like this person is very creative and they want to share their art with other people. So people who know this person well, knows them as somebody who's very good with their hands. They're very creative. They're out here showing their artistic flair to others, inspiring others. They may even facilitate workshops where a bunch of people get together and just paint and sip wine or, or they make ceramics and laugh, reenacting the ghost scene. It's like this person's um, main personality <laughs> is defined by their art. And people who know them know that. But you see them as the addict, which is very different to the colorful type of person that others who know them see them as. Look at all this color with the cards. And you see them as the addict. You see them as somebody that's dependent, that uses people, that's unhealthy they're a bit of a downer they have problems they don't take care and i want to kind of get to the bottom of that because i don't know why your version is so different to who this person is spirit how well does group one know this person oops how well does group one know this person? Justice and the King of Swords. Okay. So for some of you, I'm just going to throw out a scenario. This could be somebody that you were in a connection with previously, a relationship with, a contract with. They could be an um, ex colleague or an ex-partner is what's coming through okay and the reason why you see them as an addict if that's your story i'm going to throw out other scenarios soon because this is a general reading but if that's your story the reason why you see them as an addict is because you were the one who felt like this connection was imbalanced and that this person was either using you or just very dependent on you and that they would fixate on you instead of taking care of themselves and focusing on their own issues, their own problems, in which case you and this person are now, well, you may have had to establish very healthy boundaries to ensure that whenever you do interact with this person, they're aware that there is that boundary there for some of you this is a work colleague and you have to maintain a level of professionalism for others of you where this is an ex-partner you still feel like you have to maintain a level of professionalism you have to try to be fair but almost like stoic you're not bending rules you're not trying to you know come across as somebody who cares a lot like no you're having to be very objective. Well, I'm just here to pick up my lunch, which could resonate if you still share a community with this person. And I'm almost seeing like a situation where you just have to keep seeing them in this community. Now, if you don't reckon um, resonate, sorry, with the whole ex thing and ex partner thing, it feels like the way that you would know this person group one is because you have a contract to see them regularly. You have some sort of commitment that you may have made to yourself or to something else where they also go. And so you've been seeing this person regularly. You have spoken to them, but there are established boundaries of, well, I'm here objectively. I'm here because I have a contract to be here or I'm here because I have to fulfill this partnership requirement. You may be a professional 
and this person visits you in your professional workplace, there is an established boundary here and there's some sort of commitment that you have that means that you also interact with this person. And because of that professional boundary, this person to you is someone that you cannot engage with because doing so would be either ethically wrong or it would immediately open a can of worms of, well, who's using who in this situation? Are they using you because you're the professional or are you using them because they're also here and it's more beneficial to your contracts if you partner up? There's almost this energy here of like it would be wrong so you see this as somebody who you have to have boundaries with so that's what I'm seeing in terms of who this person is let's have a look at how else you would recognize them how else could group one recognize this person spirit page of cups reverse so you may have had to reject this person you may have had to kind of put on the hard word um, there was a period where you were friendly with them you were okay with sort of saying hello and now you've had to be very sort of withdrawn you've had to pull your energy back and you've had to be very careful about how your behavior is interpreted you don't want to give the wrong impression with the page of cups reverse this is turning a friendly fun situation into something more serious how else will group one know this person's spirit okay this is helpful yeah they're a friend you have had to friend zone this person or put this person in the acquaintance zone a colleague zone october i wish i told you something significant could have happened in october we also have initials here that initial v is coming out i wish i would have said that in the beginning i heard the letter v and the letter k we also have the letter w or the letter m take it as it resonates we have the letter J. Yeah, it feels like you had to put a serious boundary up. We have the letter X. Yeah, we did get an X for some of you. An X partner. July, I'm grateful for intimacy. Something could have happened in July, Cancer. And who else is there? Cancer Leo. October is Libra, Scorpio. Okay, longing is coming out too. We also have Uranus, which is Aquarius vibes. There is a lot of fixed energy. Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius is out now. And we have Virgo coming out. So Virgo, I don't think we had any other mutable energy, no. Oh, Capricorn. So cardinal energy is... Libra, Cancer, and now Capricorn. And we also have the letter F, which ironically made me think of this word, but this word is here as well, forgive. So you know this person is someone who may need your forgiveness or you may have had to forgive them. They may have forgiven you. There was something here that occurred in which a fun situation became more serious and clear boundaries were established. This doesn't mean that it was a full blown sort of situation. Maybe right now it's just something that, you know, is so far in the past that it's not even a big issue anymore. There's a lot of cards that could come out to indicate that this is a strained relationship, but what's coming through is that this is more of a connection that you have to be mindful of. And this is a friend zoned person who you may have had to reject in some capacity or put some sort of barrier up here this is somebody who you've noticed is um, just not what you are looking for so because the page of cups is reversed it's like you believe that you and this person aren't compatible you believe that you and this person don't like long term it's not going to work you may even view this person as somebody who's either immature or they're seeking something very different in love you may see this as somebody who would suffocate you um, who needs a lover or who needs to be in a relationship or who needs you and you don't really like that about them 
You also don't seem to be very interested in them as a lover. They are coming through as a very strong friend vibe, very friendly. So they could be your friend or they could just be somebody who you want to keep in the friend zone. With Aquarius, Uranus and friend here, very friendly vibes. There could be a friendship connection here to this person. Maybe they're friends with your friends or you know some of their friends or they know your friends or you're always around friends when you see them or they're always around friends when they see you. Um, there is also an energy here of routine, schedules, helping others and fitness, which is, I think, clues as to how you may know this person. Routines, helping others, schedules and fitness with that sixth house energy. You interact with this person based off of a need. Well, I need to go buy food and they always are there at the same time because it's the only place that people in this area go to lunch. Well, I need to work out and this is the only gym that's close to me at an affordable price. So they're going to be there. Well, I need to go and help my mom and this is her neighbor. So, you know, we're going to have to see each other. But it's a little uncomfortable because you know that they want more than what you want. The initials, I mostly got forgive. I got V for victory and Valentine's Day. This person is hoping that you warm up to them because it's Valentine's Day. With the October energy here, it was more this energy of um, longing, which did come out as well. I wish I told you and longing. Like this person has been sort of watching you, thinking about you. They get to see you quite regularly, but it feels like when you interact with them, it's because you have an objective to be there. You're interested in just seeing your mother with the letter M, you know, or you have to go and see your ex. Or oh, I don't know, I'm just throwing out scenarios now, really. For others of you where this is an ex, I feel like the more interactions you have with them, the more confused they are about their feelings. It's like they're just at the time of the year, stirring up a lot of memories um this person is really wanting to kind of shoot their shot because they feel like they do have a chance with you with this july energy here they're grateful for the interactions they have and they are confused by some of the interactions that you've had recently as well i also think that this person is just trying to kind of go through their mind and say well who could i shoot my shot at you know what what about pile one or group one um they're always around like i haven't really pushed that in a little while or it's been a while since i've like opened up and tried like maybe i could try again is the energy that i'm getting here you are the one that they want but it feels like they're not the one that you want so i'm gonna pack this up let's have a look at whether they will ask you and we're also going to get advice for you my group ones as well Okay, so will this person ask group one to be their Valentine spirit? Will this person ask group one to be their Valentine? Will this person ask group one to be their Valentine, please, spirit? We have the Four of Swords reversed. Will this person ask? We have the moon reversed. We have the emperor reversed. We have the seven of wands reversed and the nine of swords reversed. So I'm getting a very specific scenario in which this person would be able to ask you out. First of all, you don't make it easy for them. And I think that's because you're very uncomfortable by this whole thing. Um, there could be a significant age gap or it could just feel like you are being forced to see this person. It could feel uncomfortable because if you didn't have to fulfill this contract or this commitment, there's no way in the world that you would ever interact with somebody like this. Um, there's an energy about this that just feels very uncomfortable and you do everything that you can to ensure that this person does not ask you. The only circumstance in which they could is if the two of you were alone together for long enough to where this person was delusional enough to have the courage and in which case you're probably going to reject them anyway. So... 
if this person does get the chance to shoot their shot, it's because the two of you have a moment alone. They are especially weird is how I would describe it. Like, I don't think that they're a bad person. I just think you're not into them. Um, their behavior is very sus. Like you're kind of like, whoa, they're extra quiet or they're, they're being extra subtle or they may just pop up out of nowhere and you're like, whoa, I did not even see you there. Like, what are you doing? Um, it just feels like then you're not expecting them. And I also think with the four of swords reversed, it's something that you might notice and intercept immediately. Like the four of swords reversed is action that is kind of planned. And because you know now, it's likely that you're going to be able to recognize and you're going to be able to nip it in the bud um, either by creating physical distance or by flat out acknowledging what's happening and saying like, that's not what I want to do very simply. Um, it's weird because I don't know how you would word it, but I have the feeling that you'll be very good at making it very clear to this person. So here's how I see this kind of happening with the four of swords reverse. This person is going to watch you wait for you. Um, they're going to kind of just kind of feel the room first, right? They're not in a rush. They had this idea like at the beginning of February, I'm filming this on February 1st too. So maybe this idea came to them, um, in their sleep or like it was something that was like slowly in their mind, like, Hey, Valentine's day is coming up. Wow. Like maybe I could, yeah, that'd be a good idea, but they're taking their time with it. Four of swords reverse is somebody that's just slowly animating. They're reanimating after a period of rest after a period of just complacency and rejuvenation. So there's not been a lot of action, right? And they're slowly reanimating, slowly feeling, testing the waters, you know, showing up a little bit more often or being physically closer to you than they usually are or prolonging those little chats that you usually have, just kind of poking, testing. They might even say, what are your plans for Valentine's Day? What are you doing on the weekend? Um, just trying to figure out if you're even single anymore. Are you seeing anybody else? That kind of stuff. With the moon reversed, I do believe that this person is Delulu. I think you have to look out for the fact that they have very strong feelings and you can't afford to leave any ambiguity. If this is not somebody that you want to continue to see or you know, don't just say, oh, I'm busy this weekend. Say, you know, I don't think that would be a good idea. I think we just need to stay friends. Be very clear. Don't just say, oh, that Wednesday doesn't work for me. This person is going to go straight back to their calendar and go, Wednesdays don't work for her. Okay, so I've still got six other days in the week. Um, just be very specific, okay? Um, because I feel like this person is going to disarm you by coming across as somebody that's very emotionally interested. They're very attentive because they genuinely have feelings for you. So if you're needing somebody to just listen to you after you've had a busy day and you're, you just want to rant, like they're going to give you that time and that's going to kind of disarm you a little bit because you're going to go, wow, this is such a nice person. They're going to use that as their way in with the emperor reverse. This is somebody who's a little bit of a coward, um, seven of wands reversed, emperor reversed. They're not bold enough to kind of just approach you head on. They look for adjacent possibilities. They look for reasons. Well, what's a reason I can use? What's an excuse I can use to get closer to group one? With the emperor reversed, you being in your assertive energy is immediately disarming for this person. You having another um, companion with you is immediately disarming. You having a strong sense of, of pride and courage is immediately disarming for this person. They take advantage of the moments when your guard is down and when you're not defensive. So I do see you rejecting them. I see them trying to shoot their shot. Um, and I see you realizing who this person is after the fact. Like some of y'all don't even actually know 100% who this person is until they ask you. And then you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's who that crazy Australian woman was talking about. So let's get some advice for you now, Spirit. What is some advice for group one, please? 
when dealing with this person. What is some advice? What is some advice for group one when dealing with this person? We have forgive. It's important that you are clear with your emotions, that you're clear with your feelings. This forgive card is about releasing emotional attachment. Um, we don't need to hold on to uncomfortable feelings or resentment or guilt or um, anything that could continue to tie us to this person. Forgiveness with this connection is mostly about letting go. Um, you know, we don't know unless we try. So we've got to kind of see it as, well, this person is using their free will to try, but it's our responsibility to react accordingly to what is within our best interest. Um, so with this person, forgiveness is about letting go and not holding onto this in any way. Even if you're holding onto it because you're just really confused or uncomfortable, forgive and release. Um, what is the advice for group one when it comes to Valentine's Day in general, Spirit? We have fear and movement coming out. They did want to come out reversed, but movement tried to flip around. So I have a feeling that this day is going to be about another connection. We have childhood at the back of the deck. Your advice for Valentine's Day in general is to make sure that if you're missing somebody, you let them know on Valentine's Day. And this feels like a childhood connection. It could be a sibling. It could be a best friend. Um, I, there's this energy of like warm, sentimental vibes for your Valentine's Day. Connecting with people who you deeply love and care about is going to be the priority for you. What other advice do you have for them for Valentine's Day, Spirit? My group ones. What other advice do you have for them? Oh, we got two cards. Sacral chakra reversed. And the spread your wings card reversed. So Spirit's saying don't do anything out of desperation. It feels like Valentine's Day is about self, appreciating self, really loving self, doing what brings um, you joy. Some of y'all may be able to have something happen that night. Like I can kind of see a date with the <laughs> sun card coming out, whether this is a date that you take yourself on or it's a date with somebody that you've been missing, that you love deeply, that you want to see more of. Um, your advice is to do what brings you joy. Don't make it just to some other day. Have fun with it. Let your inner child be free. Do something that makes you truly happy. I'm even seeing like going to an arcade or um, bowling, like whatever you liked doing as a child might be a good thing to do on that day because it does feel like Valentine's Day is just about feeling loved for you and making sure that you feel loved not just making other people feel special, group one, but making sure that you feel loved. You need to be careful of um, not doing anything and then feeling very dejected, feeling like you're just a social reject and saying really horrible things that impact your self-esteem. This is a day that is about embracing the opportunities you do have instead of focusing on what isn't here. So if you're single or your lover isn't able to make a big deal for you, find other ways to feel loved on that day. Whether you're facilitating that or you're connecting with people who you know will make that you make you feel special in that way. Don't do nothing is my advice for you on Valentine's Day. So that's what I'm seeing for you, sweet soul. I'm going to take this into the extended reading now where we will get channeled messages from this person that might help us understand who they are a little bit more. But I'm actually curious to see what your higher self thinks about this person, what your spiritual team thinks, and we're actually going to get advice for you on your love life in general. So I'm just going to add that to my other side, group one love life advice for the next month what can you do to help your love life over the next month we'll do that in the extended reading as well as everything else so 
If you enjoyed the first part of your reading, if it did resonate and you want to support me and get more clarity, the link to your extended reading is in the description box, sweet soul. That link does take you to my website. Unfortunately, in January, we were having major glitches with my website host where extended reading links weren't synced to the actual video. So I've been working with my host to resolve those issues. We do seem to be back on track now. And I'm deeply sorry to everybody who was impacted by that. I'm having to go back through my emails and just make sure that everybody's okay. It seemed to be a pretty widespread issue, which is really frustrating, but you weren't the only one if it did impact you. I don't know if that makes you feel better, but I will get back to you if you have emailed me. Thankfully, that issue is resolved. It's just very unfortunate that it lasted pretty much two weeks. So that's insane, but it's thankfully not going to persist. And if it does, for whatever reason, manifest again, we're going to be a lot quicker with reacting to it next time, which is good. At least it was a big learning curve. So I'm sorry. And I thank you so much for everybody who was supporting me through that period. That extended reading link, as I was saying before, if you're new here, takes you to my website where I host over 230 extended reading videos. So please make sure that you click on the right group. Triple check before you pay any money. It's your hard earned money. Make sure you know that it's going to the right thing. You are group one of my who wants to be your Valentine's, um, your Valentine reading. So find the right video to get your messages. There is a search function on desktops as well, or you just scroll down or swipe across on your mobile device. Thank you so much, group one, for all of your time, your energy and your support. I appreciate you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. I'm just sending so much love your way. And I will see you in the extended if you're joining me there. If not, until our paths cross again, I wish you peace, prosperity, abundance, happiness, joy, health, wealth, and success on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful self and bye. group twos and welcome to your reading if you chose the live it the ghost tarot deck then this is going to be your reading welcome group twos it's so lovely to have you here i just got cute little butterflies so i might know some of y'all in this group it feels like i'm reading for a friend although i'm not gonna lie to you i did say that to group one but they didn't give me butterflies. So welcome group two. Now we've got a cute little reading ahead of us today. We're asking spirit, who wants to be your Valentine? How do you know this person? How are you supposed to identify them? And we'll also ask, will they ask you? So we've got a lot to kind of cover. It's going to be a fun reading. Still, it is a good idea to practice discernment. So I highly recommend taking notes um, and writing down what resonates, what doesn't resonate, etc. I also highly recommend having a hydration source handy, which speaking of sweet soul, I'm so sorry to do this to you. Just over a minute. But I really needed hydration. Let's get into it. Okay. Shuffling your deck to channel your energy. Spirit, tune me into group two's energy. Who wants to be group two's valentine? Who wants to be group two's Valentine? Okay. We've got a cord. We have the Ten of Wands coming out reversed. Okay. The back of the deck is the Death card. All right. Let's put that over there. I do have some shuffling to do because I didn't pre-shuffle. So you're welcome to skip ahead if you want to. Spirit, who wants to be group two's Valentine? <clears throat> Oops. Who wants to be group two's Valentine, please, Spirit? Oops. 
I'm seeing the letter A, so A could be significant. Andy is what came to mind specifically. There could be a connection to Toy Story as well. Um, cowboys, I'm seeing braids, like two pigtails. Two braids and like a drawstring hat. Some sort of hat that has like a string on it that you put under your chin. What's that girl's name from Toy Story? I'm seeing her specifically. <laughs> the female who's like Woody's companion, like her, his love interest. We have the riddle coming out. We have the sword coming out. I just heard sword. So some of you might say that word like that, sword, or there could be a strong accent. We have apocalypsis coming out. Although to a lot of you, I have a strong accent. So. <laughs> We all have accents, depending on where you're from. We have the animal coming out as well. At the back of the deck is Alethea. Alethea. I always say it differently. I'm terrible. I heard another reader say it, and it was just like music. She sung it. I was like, dang, girl. She said it better than I have ever said it in my whole life. I was so impressed. All right, spirit. Who is this person? Who is this person? Who wants to be group two's Valentine, please, Spirit? Mm. We have family man coming out. This person could have a child, but how does group two see this person? How does group two see this person? Okay, we have divine masculine coming out. And other hints is struggling musician at the back of the deck. Okay. Alrighty. So, who wants to be your Valentine group two? With the Ten of Wands reverse, this is somebody that has a lot of responsibility. I'm seeing that this person is definitely a provider. They are definitely somebody that seems to have a lot of going on in their life right now. There's somebody that is tired a lot of the time, um, mostly because they are somebody that takes responsibility very seriously. They could have dependents, people who are dependent on them. They seem to be somebody who has to provide for a lot of people or they take their responsibilities very seriously. So they may be even saving to be a provider in the future if they don't have a big sort of support system. But this could be somebody that looks after their parents, for example, that has children. Um, they seem to be very conscious of what they need to take care of, their responsibilities, etc. Because of that, you see them as a very masculine energy, as somebody who is very assertive, who is very protective, you're very drawn to this masculine archetype within them and the fact that they do take care of whatever is theirs. Um, you see them as somebody that is a hard worker. This is somebody who doesn't give up easily. This is probably somebody who burns out easily though. I wouldn't be surprised if they've had certain health issues, joint problems, um, spinal issues, back problems, muscular issues, especially with this 10 of wands reversed it's more of a muscular issue um something to do with them just being a very hard worker this is also a very honest person they are somebody who i believe you know has a fondness for you the fact that this person we got the death card at the back of the deck the sword and aletheia um it kind of makes me think that this is somebody who you're aware of in some capacity. Apocalypsis and the death card makes me think that this is somebody who you've been through something with. Um, it doesn't have to be an ex. That's not really what I would call this situation. I would say that this is mostly somebody that you've had um, been through a transformation with. Your relationship has transformed. It's not the way that it was in the beginning. I also think with this riddle energy group too, this is probably somebody who I feel you've just kind of made a lot of assumptions about. They are probably the first person that came to mind when you saw this video. They were probably somebody who was at the back of your mind while I was shuffling. 
they are probably somebody who honestly even if you've tried to move forward with your life move on with your life it's hard for you to forget about this person and not think about this person i also think with this riddle energy reversed that this is somebody who you are in a bit of a confusing space with I don't think things are straightforward with this person at all, mostly because of their responsibilities, their priorities. This person does put their family first, but they also are somebody who, because they prioritize other people's needs, their own needs seem to go on the back burner. And it could have felt like you and this person have history because maybe there was momentum previously and then the momentum was stalled because of this person's other responsibilities because they had so much going on and you just had to go whatever um i believe that a key clue as to who this person is is that you've either seen them as somebody that's either struggling or they're just blowing off steam they're either very overwhelmed and have a lot going on in their life or they're almost going off the rails and overindulging and you know just really sort of um responding to the amount of pressure that is on their shoulders so you're you overall you you do have a lot of compassion for this person you have you see them in a very high light um there's probably a lot of things about this person that you idealize um to the point where maybe you there's some behaviors or there's certain aspects of their character that you've said well I would like my future person to have that those attributes as well I think that there are things about this person that you find very attractive but I also think that you have a complicated history with this person for some of you you know that they have children to somebody else or you know that they've just got a lot going on in their life that they take their responsibilities very very seriously and you know that that's not enough for you um for others of you it could be that you're still getting to know this person and you're not sure if they are going to want to see you on valentine's day because they've got so much going on it just feels like your history with this person is complicated they are likely somebody that you thought about when you clicked on this video though and they are definitely somebody who's always at the back of your mind at the moment especially um, maybe not always, but like as the February month sort of creeped in, you started thinking about them a lot. I do think that your connection with them has gone through a transformation, mostly due to this person's crazy, busy sort of lifestyle and the fact that they haven't had a good turn of events. I think that you've been quite accommodating and I do think that you still see potential I just think that the ball is more in this person's court than your court. Are there any other hints, Spirit? Who is this person? Who wants to be group ones? Oh, group two, sorry. Who wants to be group two's Valentine? Okay, we got a lot more than what I was expecting. Let's have a look at what fell out first. It's a house... 12th house endings so yeah death card apocalypse you could have had an ending with this person this could be somebody you know from your past um hidden pisces secret mm, things could be very maybe they haven't discussed their intentions very clearly with you maybe they've spoken about other intentions like yeah you know like i'm just i'm a family man or i'm a korean man and I just want to say that as a example, they don't have to be a man, but they could have just come across as being very sort of focused and you were like, wow, how do I fit into that? There does seem to be an element here of you not expecting to hear from them on Valentine's, but you're kind of hopeful that you will. So 12th house is very much about endings. You've had to surrender the situation you've had to just go you know whatever but i do think that the ball is in this person's court because you're under the impression that you're not a priority in this person's life we also have the eye here yeah i do feel like this person is very focused on their own life right now they haven't shown much 
interest or investment in your life in the recent um, days for some of you weeks we have seven the seventh house here partnerships so I do think that this is somebody who you now recognize as a love interest I don't think that, that was the way for a lot of you maybe you met this person under different circumstances or you kind of met them as a love interest and then had to kind of give them space in a friendly way but I do think that um, as it stands now, you would be more interested in a partnership. You would be more interested in seeing, trying for something more serious, more balanced. This is somebody who could be in another situation with marriage coming out. They could be someone who's going through a divorce or they're in a separation or there's some sort of commitment that they're in is a good way to know. For some of you, they could be married but endings and marriage, maybe a marriage is ending or a contract is ending. Mm, that's interesting. We have jail and we have deal. That could be significant for someone. I'm also hearing guilty party. We have moon here as well. So I'm seeing Pisces, Libra, and now Cancer. We also had Scorpio over there. So I do think that they keep a lot of their feelings for you secret because I don't think they want to lead you on. I think they want to step towards you with more clarity, especially if there has been an ending between the two of you. This person is more so focused on acting intentionally and communicating with clarity so they're going to withhold instead of sort of overwhelming you with information it's not helpful is what i'm feeling so they internalize a lot more than than they reveal we also have headache here yeah, I do think that this is somebody who just gave you a headache. It was a lot. It was a lot for you to take on. It was a lot for you to think about. You couldn't do it. You had to just sort of step back. Yeah, family's coming through again. Easter could be significant. I'm grateful for my family. Hmm. I'm grateful for my job. Yeah, this person just had a lot going on between family and their job. It was like, where do I fit in? Um, I, I either get the feeling that things never got off the ground or things had to come to an end because this person's other priorities. February, so this is more Pisces and Aquarius energy. I'm grateful for my love. Yeah, I do think they hold a candle to you. Like I do think that things emotionally didn't really end. Tangibly things could have ended, but emotionally things didn't. H, I'm seeing high now. So I do see this person reaching out to you, but I will ask. We also have hips, so they could have a hip problem or you could have a hip problem. Because um, I was getting like joint and muscle. It could just be a muscle around the hip, but um, yeah. So HIP are significant initials. It could be theirs or yours, first, middle or last name initial. We have gratitude. Gratitude is the attitude is what I heard. So this could be somebody who is trying to really just practice gratitude. We're seeing a lot of gratitude, actually. You guys got more gratitude things than group one did. I'm grateful for love. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful for my family. And then we got gratitude. So I do think that this person is working on improving their mindset. They are currently also, well, you know them as someone that tries to see the positive in everything maybe they try to have a positive twist or even if they seem to be going through a lot they just kind of tune it out and uh, just try to see the good you might know them as somebody that sees the good in other people as well but i also just think that that's how you know them like you try to see them with gratitude like your view of them is the divine masculine so you're seeing them in a very positive light Okay, let's get some tarot. Is there any other hints, spirit, as to how group two knows this person? How does group two? We have 
the two of yeah the high priestess coming out so this is somebody that is always on your mind in some capacity at the back of your mind um, this is somebody that you ask about when you watch tarot readings this is somebody that you could have already watched another reading about today, asking for clarity on, on how they feel, on what their intentions are, on whether they're going to come back, on what their next actions are, something like that. With the High Priestess coming out reversed, it's like you already know. And I do think that this is somebody that really intrigues you. There's a lot of mystery around this person. You feel very drawn to them. You also feel very connected to them. But you have a lot of enigmatic um, questions that are left unsolved. So there's a lot of intrigue around this person, what they have to bring into your life and why they sort of came into your life. We also have, I want to say this is the Six of Wands. It almost looks like the Six of Pentacles too, though. Let me just double check. This deck confuses me sometimes, I'm not even going to lie. It forces me to kind of slow down and just double check what I'm feeling. Spirit, I'm just going to pull more cards and then I'll double check. Um, how will group two know this person? How did group two, how does group two know this person? Okay, we also have justice coming out. So for a lot of you, you could be in a relationship with this person. And we have the Ace of Cups reverse coming out. Okay, judgments at the back of the deck. You could have been in a relationship with this person or a marriage. Or there was some sort of promise here that it was going to get to that point. I don't think this is a proper X. Like I might just be very blind because Spirit has shown me justice twice now, marriage twice. They've also shown me an ending twice. I'm having the death card in my hands while I'm saying that. So yeah, maybe this is an X. But I do think with the judgment card being here, like you'd be open to reinvention. This is someone that you are open to having a future with if the right circumstances materialize because the judgment card isn't about repeating past cycles. This is about reinvention, transformation, revelations, we don't just copy paste from the past. No, we learn, we transform, we change, and we move forward. So I'm sorry, I'm just clarifying that card there. I'm pretty sure that's the six of wands, but I just want to be sure. I just saw the six of pentacles, the six of swords. Yeah, and I know what the Six of Cups looks like. That's the Nine of Cups. Sorry, my sweet souls. I This deck doesn't have like a proper guidebook. That's my only frustration with this deck. Um, and the artwork is ambiguous. So you're just constantly like, that's the Six of Cups. Constantly like Nine of Swords, yeah. Oh, that's the six of wands. So that's the six of pentacles. One, two, three. And there's like five seeds on that. So it's just so confusing sometimes. It's definitely a deck that is more about interpretation than anything else. But I'm going to say that that's the six of pentacles because it's about sharing. Okay. Yeah. And this is just what was at the back of the deck. Okay. So, sorry for that. How do you know this person? So, we had talked about the High Priestess. Six of Pentacles, Justice, and the Ace of Cups reversed. There was a letdown here. There was a redirection of emotion that could have come across as a rejection, and it could have even felt like unrequited love. But with the Justice card being here, this was somebody that had promises of partnership. If you weren't in a relationship with them, it felt like it was going to get to that stage. Um... They do want to be your Valentine. I feel like this person is somebody who 
when things were going well like they're very reciprocal and that could have been how things ended because they couldn't maintain reciprocity this is somebody who wanted to be very fair but they mirrored and matched everything that you did they gave as much as you gave and when things became unbalanced so did their efforts is what i feel um I do think that this is somebody that you almost want to hear from. This is somebody that you are probably, I wanted, I don't want to say hopeful, but under the right circumstances, it would be shocking to hear from them, but it would be so shocking that you would be open to it, if that makes sense with the judgment card here. I do think you have a past with this person. The extent of that past is dependent upon your individual situation. For some of you, this is an ex. For others of you, this is a connection that had a lot of promise, but it just never got to the next stage. You guys got stuck in second gear or something and things could never kind of progress. For others of you, this person has a lot of deep feelings that they didn't get to fully explore with you. It might have been implied or there could have been a strong indication of these feelings, but things never really got to the next stage. I am seeing here that this is somebody that takes a lot of pride in their work. They have a lot of time for their family and they have a lot of love to give. They practice gratitude, but they gave you headaches. Um, there could have been something about a hip here, but I think that for most of you with the tarot and the oracle cards, this is somebody, oh, I didn't even talk about the animal. This is somebody that definitely inspired you to just sort of break through barriers and let this person in. Like, I don't think that a lot of people get to see the side of you that this person got to see for one way or another. That's why this person is so enigmatic to you. You're just like, who are they and what were they brought into my life for? Because they unveiled a side to you that other people don't get to see. You showed them a side to you that other people don't get to see. And it could have happened very quickly. It could have just felt like an instinct. Like, yeah, it could have felt very easy to be that version of yourself with this person. Whereas with other people, you're not that way. So let's have a look now at will they ask you to be their Valentine? Okay. Will this person ask group two to be their Valentine spirit? Will this person ask group two? To be their Valentine. Okay, so we got the Eight of Cups upright. We got the Ace of Swords upright. Will this person ask group? Okay, lots of cards are like, I want to come out. Ten of Swords upright. But like, they just keep getting shuffled back in, so... There we go. Who are you? We have the six of cups upright. Yeah, this person is going to be missing you on that day. Heavy energy. We have the queen of cups, La Reine. Um, queen of cups reversed. Back of the deck is the sun. Le Soleil. I'm terribly saying it really bad. Like, I don't have a French accent at all. I didn't even really grow up around many French people, so I don't even know where to begin. But I do have a French name for some reason. Mom decided to give me a French name. Okay, so let's look at this group two. That was my way of apologizing to French speakers, by the way. I didn't really, though, did I? Sorry for butchering Francois. Francois? Francais? Anyway, look, I'm making it even worse. I bury myself in this hole and I'm not digging it any further. <laughs> okay, so will they ask you? Honestly, the chances are quite high, but it might be, it might be, okay, so here's what I'm seeing. There is a lot of energy 
here. There is a lot of emotion here. There is a missing energy here. This person misses you, group two. They are longing for you on that day of all days and they feel very sad about the status of your connection on Valentine's Day. I feel like with the Eight of Cups, it's this energy of like having to move away. Like the Eight of Cups is about leaving a situation. The Eight of Cups is about recognizing that emotionally it is in their best interest to leave a situation. But with the Ace of Swords here, this is about a new idea, right? And I would say that that's a yes. They want to reach out to you. And then we have the Ten of Swords, but can they? Maybe one of you blocked the other person. There is no possibility for this person to reach out to you, even if they wanted to. Um... And so there seems to be a longing to, but I'm not convinced that this person will reach out to you. They may even be waiting to hear from you, group two. They may be waiting to hear like, well, what do you want to do? Um, because it's almost like, well, who's going to do it first? Like the ace and the ten of swords. It's a big jump. It's a big jump. It's a big ask. It's a huge leap. Um, it's like, how do I turn this idea into an outcome? Or how do I take this intention into an action? So I'm not convinced that they will. I can pull more cards. Let's pull cards from this deck. Spirit will group two's person ask group two to be their valentine for some of you you're just going to get like a text that lets you know that they're thinking of you because most of the energy i'm seeing is is about reflection nostalgia thinking back on the memories missing you missing you missing you and thinking about how things came to an end. Will this person reach out? We have the Eight of Wands. They definitely want to. There is a desire of like wanting to here. I want to reach out to group two. Will this person reach out to group two? We also have the Four of Cups reversed. Opportunity beckons. Will this person reach out to group two spirit? We have Master, the Devil card, Upright. And we have Temperance at the back of the deck. So honestly, this person is a little unpredictable. <laughs> this is coming from someone that's supposed to be giving you predictions, group two. I don't feel confident in giving you predictions because I feel like this person is likely to push boundaries with that Devil energy there. They're likely to try instead of not. But I also think that this person is fearful and I think that they are looking for a scapegoat with the devil card, right? This isn't a card of courage. This is a card of doing what's easy and trying to get away with instant gratification in term instead of um, putting in the hard work that could guarantee long-term success. So this person is more likely to do something that is instantly gratifying that is, you know, a little bit of effort for a big reward, even if it's temporary. Um, there is intention here. There is attraction here. They're really thinking about you. And there is also this desire to not miss out on something if they can. But I just feel like it's not sustainable. I feel like it's just a little flare of energy to kind of show you that they're still interested um, and I do think that this person is more reciprocal than they are reactive. So they're likely to just reciprocate whatever you give to them. They're likely to want to work off the energy that is being given to them. I believe that this person is going to really positively respond to any information you give them. I don't see a lot of initiative though. I see this person doing the easy thing. 
And it's also because, you know, I don't know if much has changed. They don't have a lot of energy that they can give you unless you're able to give more to this connection. The connection is balancing off of whatever energy is currently in it. Yeah, that's where we're at, I believe. I feel confident in that. They just feel a bit unpredictable because if alcohol is involved, right? <laughs> and if they're alone, if there's nobody else around them, no friends, no family, it's just them and like a six pack or even a four pack of seltzers, whatever their go-to drink is, for some of y'all it's wine, then that's a different story. Once they're in their fields and they're isolated, they're more likely to try to connect with you. But it feels very last minute. It doesn't feel like it's February 1st, group two, and I'm thinking about you. What are you doing on February 14th? It's like, no, it's 9 p.m. Valentine's Day or it's 2 a.m. the 15th of February. And I've been thinking about you. And what are you doing? It feels a little bit last minute, spontaneous, reciprocal, um, instantly gratifying. And it's kind of like, just because I'm thinking of it right now, I need to do it, but I might wake up in the morning and regret it. So, I don't feel confident in saying that this is everything and everything, anything that you could possibly ask for, you know, like it's not like a huge wish come true. I think if anything, this person would be more likely to react and respond to you reaching out to them first. So let's get some advice for you. Spirit, what advice do you have for group two? Sagittarius and Capricorn are very strong in this part of your reading, but I'm also seeing Leo and Pisces. Scorpio was strong in the first part of your reading as well. And Virgo. What advice do you have for group two, please, Spirit? Okay. We have fire. Play with fire and you get burned, Spirit saying, but that's not the only message. What advice do you have for group two, please, Spirit? Okay, we have truth be truthful to yourself to this person and we have romance so that's the thing I do think that this is somebody who you know who am I to say that this isn't what you want the heart wants what it wants I think that you and this person have a complicated history I think that it's very important that you are honest with yourself with this person I do think you're going to have a little bit of fiendish fun with this person in February I don't know if it's going to happen around Valentine's Day but just don't lose that connection to self that connection to source because it's kind of like you enjoy the temporary satisfaction that this connection can offer you especially in the month of February maybe that works for you as well the fact that you guys are focused on other things and you can just come back and have fun here your advice is to be very careful with this person because there's a lot of attraction there is a lot of tension there is a lot of sexual compatibility there is not a lot of stability. So knowing all of that, if you play with fire, you get burned. If you know how to play with fire, go ahead and have your fun. Group two, by all means, you could just treat this as a you know temporary moment where you can have your needs met and have your fun, but just know what you're getting yourself into if that's what you want. When it comes to romance, I do think that you are going to have to be honest with yourself and you are going to have to almost demand honesty from this person. My legs are so restless right now. So I just think that it's not impossible to f have a mutually beneficial experience with this person around Valentine's Day. But your advice is to just be honest with yourself and to really trust what your instincts are telling you. I do think that this person will be honest with you, but I think you also need to take the rose-colored glasses off and just see what they're saying as the truth. 
Don't try to read between the lines and over intellectualize what they're trying to say. Don't try to over spiritualize what they're trying to say. Take their words for the truth and enjoy the moment for what it is. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group two. I hope this was a helpful, fun little reading. I'm going to take this into your extended now where we will have a look at what this person wants to say to you through channeled messages. We're also going to have a look at what your higher self thinks of this person, what your spiritual team thinks of this person. And for your group, we're going to have a look at what is next in this connection. I'm going to write it down because that's what I did for group one as well. So that's everything that we're covering in the extended. If the first part of your reading did resonate and you wish to support me further, the extended readings is a wonderful way to support me. You could also just like this video. That's another wonderful way to support me. Um, thank you so much for your time, for your energy and for your effort. The link to your extended reading is in the description box. Triple check before you check out that you have selected the right reading. You are group two of the who wants to be your valentine reading and if we are crossing paths again i should say if we're if our paths do not cross from this point forward i wish you peace prosperity abundance joy happiness health wealth and success on your journey ahead thank you so much for all of your time and i will see you soon bye Hi group three and welcome to your reading. If you chose the lover's card, ow, from the, my elbow has like a little, that hurt for a second, sorry guys. Um, if you chose the lover's card from the uh, trip and ride away tarot deck, I just had to remember it, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome group three. We're asking spirit who wants to be your valentine. I've got a lot of fun things to get through today, so strap yourselves in. It's going to be a cute little reading. I will have a careers reading up soon as well, just to cover a base that I haven't covered in a good couple of months. I haven't done a careers slash finances reading in a long time. So if you're looking for something more um, practical, helpful, or even serious, then keep your eyes posted for that. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this reading today. Welcome my group threes. So I'm going to keep this card near because I do need to refer to it. We've got a lot to cover. I'm going to start by having a look at who wants to be your Valentine beautiful soul. So let me just shuffle this card back in. My group threes, please spirit. Those that chose the trip and ride away deck. Who wants to be group threes Valentine? Tune me in to group threes energy. Okay. Who wants to be group three's Valentine spirit? Oops, why is that not shuffling properly? Who wants to be group three's Valentine? Okay. Ooh. Straight off the cuff, we have the lover coming out. We also have the heart. We have the poet, the back of the deck, I'm seeing the siren, and we also have the vow and gnosis. So this is really cute energy, you guys. I'm going to put these cards over here, put the tarot deck over there for now. Okay, I'm going to get this deck as well, spirit. Who wants to be... Group. Look at all that pink. Who wants to be group three's valentine spirit? Who wants to be group three's valentine? We have struggling musician coming out. Can you tell us about this person, spirit? We have super fan. And a 
at the back of the deck is Married Man. Okay. How will group three know this person's spirit? We have the two of cups coming out to make love, not war. How will group three know this person? We also have the moon reversed. And we have the ace of swords reversed. At the back of this deck is the king of swords upright. Okay. We have some tissue box messages. Who is this person, spirit? How will they meet them? How will they know them? Okay. So, who is this person? We have lover. <laughs> yeah, I think that's quite obvious. The lover with lover. So they're definitely a lover. We also have Sagittarius, so they could be a Sagittarius. The age range of 45 to 55 could be significant. Other mutable signs could be significant. Sagittarius is the main sign that's coming through, though. We do also have Capricorn, so they could be a Sagittarius Capricorn cusp, but 55 to 65 is coming out now, Capricorn being cardinal. Um, we also have another cardinal sign, Libra, 35 to 40 now. So those are three signs that are very prominent. I'm also seeing Cancer. Um, that's the only one that I feel comfortable. Maybe Pisces as well. All right, let's have a look at what else we've got. We have Heart. Yeah, I've got the fan on low, so I'm sorry if these things are flying around too much. Let's see if that does anything. Not really. Okay, there we go. All right, we've got some houses now, sweets. So we've got the sixth house coming out, which is about, well, I'll read it out to you. So we've got health, routines, fitness, schedules, helping others, and Virgo associated with the sixth house. We also have this planet Jupiter coming out, more Sagittarius and Pisces energy. I can just see that this person has a very, um, they have a very interesting connection to the universe in that whether they're spiritual or not they seem to be very good at just kind of going with the flow of events in life well that's not entirely true because we've got two cardinal signs here we have the letter o as well could be an initial we have same so you and this person are going to feel the same way a hundred percent it's a very mutual attraction here and we have the 10th house. So careers, structures, fathers, traditions, rules, and Capricorn with the 10th house association. So a lot of um, earth energy. This is definitely somebody who is going to be a lover in that you will either be in a relationship with them or there'll be somebody that you're dating or who has the intention to date you. There's no um, ambiguity here, group three. It's not like this is a friend. You both have the serious intention of dating each other. With that being said, I do believe that this person is um, interested in the romantic side of Valentine's Day and how it can possibly offer your connection more depth. You're not going to be confused about who this person is because they want to make it very clear to you. You may have a date on Valentine's Day or they may be doing something to show you that they're thinking of you and to make you feel special on that day as well group three i do think that you'll know this person because they will be established in your life by the time valentine's day comes around how you meet them they do seem very reciprocal when you give they give there's very balanced grounded stable energy here there's also a strong energy of intention and planning as well as a little bit of a surprise so they may surprise you on valentine's day as well how you would have met this person honestly i think that one of you could have taken a risk but this person was very much a follower so they followed up if you were the one who kind of took a risk here with Jupiter and was like, oh, that person's really attractive. Like I might just go and say hi. Or if you reached out first or whatever that kind of situation was, it does feel like 
they made it very clear that they see you the same way. There's so much reciprocity. There's also a signs of a structured approach to getting to know each other. One that didn't have much confusion. It was very straightforward. Um, you both had that desire and you both chased that desire. You both felt the same way about each other. And this is somebody who had every intention from the beginning of showing you that they were interested in you romantically. They weren't like, well, can we just take it slow and be friends first? They were very clear in that they wanted to date you and they wanted to be in your life in that way. Now, more about who this person is. Honestly, they have a very soft side to them. There's some interesting messages in the tissue box messages and tarot that makes this person seem like they could have a side to them that likes to be in control, that likes to be very um, <clears throat> prepared, that likes to be very accountable, but also with Virgo's energy there, they're probably somebody that just likes to have things done the way that they are used to having it done. They could be someone that's very independent with all this Cardinal and Virgo energy. With that being said, for you, they just melt like putty. This person is your super fan and they are someone who really wants to try to make the most out of like quality time with you. So there may be moments where this person has to, you know, naturally work on whatever else is going on in their life. I think that this person takes their role in life very seriously. If they've got a job that they're passionate about, for example, I think that that would be their one of their loves in their life and that they're very committed to that and making sure that they exceed expectations in their workplace. I think that this person is a very motivated person in that sense. Um, but they also could get distracted easily. And I think that you take up a lot of room in their head, in their heart, and also in their plans. So it's hard for me to get a read on what this person has going on in their life because this reading is all about you. This is somebody that will be very enamored with you. They will adore you. They'll be very devoted to you. And I can see that this is somebody who has every intention of using Valentine's Day to take the connection to the next level, which could be defining a relationship if this is a newer connection, or it could be about creating more emotional intimacy, especially with these cards down here. I really feel like this person wants to be your Valentine because they want to get on the same page as you. They want to make sure that the two of you have that opportunity to emotionally connect, to understand each other's emotional needs, and to really have these in-depth conversations. This is somebody that likes deep conversations. This is also somebody that where the nighttime seems to be significant. It could be that you do something on Valentine's Day night with them. You may have met them at night or your most recent interaction with them could have been at night. Um, it feels like this person is trying to really make the most out of those quieter sort of moments. And I, I think for some reason that happens at night for this person. Maybe they're very busy during the day or you're busy during the day. Um, and it just so works out that the nighttime is the best time for the two of you to meet, especially if they do want to see you a lot. Maybe they want to see you during the weekday or the working week, you know, and nighttime is the only time to do it. With that being said, the Ace of Swords being reversed, I see the Ace of Swords being reversed as like a mistake, but for you, it feels like a surprise. It feels like with the King of Swords here, a surprise. So I believe that the person that wants to be your Valentine's could be somebody who feels like they need to keep something from you, especially with the moon that they are going to reveal on Valentine's day. It feels like a surprise that comes out on that day or around that day. If, if the day itself for some reason doesn't work out to be your best date night, then it will be still celebrating Valentine's day, but like the day after or the day before or the weekend after, um, I don't even know what day Valentine's day is on. But I do think that this person has planned something with you. And I think that they are somebody who likes to plan things. They feel very drawn to you. This person is incredibly attracted to you with the siren card here. And with Gnosis, there's something that they know 
within themselves that they want to share with you. So the way that I see this is like this person has maybe realized something or they've gained clarity over their own thoughts and feelings that they want to communicate with you. Just again, making sure that everything is balanced, harmonious and equal between the two of you. I can see that this is somebody who is going to be wearing their heart on their sleeve, my group threes. And the only other thing I think I haven't mentioned is that they do try to show you their best side with this struggling musician and super fan. That's the main message I'm getting because I feel like this person wants you to see them in a, in a good way. They want you to see them as somebody who is supportive and all they want to do is play. They don't want you to see them as somebody who is trying really hard, but I do think that they will be trying really hard um, with that struggling musician. So let's clarify, is there anything else I've missed here, Spirit, over how group three will recognize this person? Can we clarify how they meet this person, Spirit? How does group three meet this person? We have the seven of cups reverse. So you choose them out of a group of people. You could meet them in a group setting where you have a lot of options. Um, the chariot reverse. So the roles are reversed. So maybe you approach them first or they approach you first. If you're used to approaching people first, this person does the opposite. If you're used to people coming towards you first, then they come towards you. Then you go towards them first, if that makes sense. Roles are reversed with the chariot reversed. Queen of Pentacles and Ace of Cups. Yeah, it feels like you're the one that initiates things. Um, but there's a very clear new beginning between the two of you. And you fearing rejection initially before this person is able to communicate and express themselves to you. The internet is showing up as a likely place of meeting with the chariot reversed. You could meet this person while you're on a trip out of the house, especially. Um, queen of Pentacles it could be at somebody's workplace as another scenario. But also the Queen of Pentacles is like you managing and fulfilling duties. So it could even be while you're running errands or say you're at your work and your boss says, hey, can you go down to this place and pick this up, please? So you go down and you do that while you're fulfilling your duties you meet this person it does feel like you have the upper hand even if you initiate conversation first you have the upper hand there's something a little bit superficial about the setting where you feel judged by your appearance it could be because you feel a little insecure about what you're wearing at the time um but the king of wands reversed is like an insecurity king of swords upright is superficiality so it kind of feels like either, like I said before, a dating app or online where like you're judged over your photos and your appearance or in person and whatever you're wearing, you just feel like, oh, this person is so attractive. Like, why did they have to catch me on laundry day? Or why did they have to catch me on maintenance day when I'm still trying to, you know, <laughs> get my ish together? Um, Family seems to be very important to both of you. I don't think it'll take long for you to each meet family, whether that's siblings or parents. This seems to happen quite quickly. Is there any other clues as to how group three may know this person? How else you may know them? The emperor reverse. That's an interesting energy with the guru at the back of the deck. Yeah, you probably are going to be getting advice on how to meet this person or getting advice from this person for some of you. This is a professional that you are seeking out for advice. Advice before you meet them. Advice seems to be um, important for some reason. But also the guru is about structure. So you might meet them through a, a traditional way of meeting them. So keeping in mind, there are so many... It depends on your culture. Um, but a conversation I was having recently with one of my cousins, I think that the new norm in modern day dating, the more traditional way of meeting people in your modern way of dating is online. Whereas, you know, maybe in a different culture, the more traditional way of meeting people is through arranged meetings or blind dates, you know, it's getting set up through friends and family. That could be a more traditional way of meeting. Um, just depends on your culture. So 
the guru is also talking about you knowing that you know this is what you're here for because you ultimately go to the guru to obtain information so you would go to this place or go to this engage in this situation wanting to date is what i'm saying that's how you met this person you were wanting to meet somebody um with the emperor reverse that's an interesting twist because the emperor is about control and calculated risk so this could have felt like something that was out of your control to an element that so that's why it's giving blind date vibes or um maybe a dating app with a twist um and it could have felt like a very big risk that wasn't very calculated. And you were like, oh, I just don't want to miss out. Four of Cups reversed. Um, competitive environment where people seem to be fighting for other people's attention. So that gives dating apps. Or speed dating. Speed dating too. Two of Pentacles reversed. Yeah. You did have to choose each other. That's what's coming through. Seven of Cups, Five of Wands, Two of Pentacles reversed. You had to choose each other. I do think that you were attracted to each other from the beginning. Um, this Valentine's Day could be an opportunity to make it clear that you each want to be official or, or exclusive because the setting promotes wandering eyes with the Seven of Swords. So... It could feel like you need to be very upfront about exclusivity. Otherwise, it's like, well, I'm just going to keep swiping. Um, temperance reversed. Something out of your control again. Being out of a comfort zone, taking risks that aren't calculated. Cancelled plans. Well, this didn't work, so I'm going to try this instead. I'm going to repurpose this energy and create something out of nothing. Because I'm looking for something more meaningful. I feel like this is my group that wants something more meaningful. I had other groups that were still in casual energies. So if you don't resonate with something more meaningful, you might have messages in other groups. But I'm seeing intention, purpose, um, trying and, and, you know, false starts in love. And then this person comes into your life. Like, yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. Let's have a look at will they ask you. And if they do, what does your Valentine's Day look like? Alrighty, just packed everything away. Let's continue. Oops, you flipped. How dare you? Okay, spirit. How will, well, not how, <laughs> will group three's person ask them out for Valentine's Day? Will group three's person, we have the two of swords reversed. Will group three's person ask them to be their valentine spirit? Group three's person ask them to be their valentine. Will group three's person ask them to be their valentine spirit? We have the four of wands upright. Will group three's person ask them to be their valentine? We have the three of wands reversed. No barking. Sorry for the barking group three. And we have the seven of pentacles reversed. At the back of the deck is the five of wands reversed. So... Do I need any other messages? We're going to elaborate anyway. We'll just start with these with these cards and then I'll go on from there. I feel like this person and you, this person wants to be your Valentine, right? And they want you to see them in a very specific way. But I do think that for a lot of you, there's still external um, interference or there's still a little bit of um, information that needs processing. And it feels like most of this is happening on your end. As much as this person is very enamored by you, the two of wands reverse tells me that there needs to be some sort of clarity. 
which is more likely to come out as like a conversation between the two of you. And that conversation is about getting on the same page, right? So I am not confident in saying that the two of you will have something happen on Valentine's Day specifically. It feels like you are going to prioritize intimacy and the opportunity to communicate. There is also this focus here on stability in the connection with the two of wands. This person will want to do something meaningful, you, meaningful for you on Valentine's, but it might not be like a formal sort of, will you be my Valentine? It will just be an opportunity to see you um, for Valentine's Day. So I do think that there is some delays in being able to make that moment happen. I don't think this is going to happen on Valentine's Day is what I'm seeing. The cards that, I'm, uh, that I pulled are about firstly getting on the same page, eliminating competition. So it feels like that's mostly on your end. The two of you getting on the same page, removing other potential suitors or other interference creating stability in the connection so that you are able to feel more secure within the connection as well um, and prioritizing quality time, breaking down certain defenses, which could feel like more vetting. If this is a newer connection, there might be more conversations about the future. What are you kind of expecting in the near future? What are you looking for in the near future? What do you want moving forward? That kind of stuff. If you've been seeing each other for a little while, then this is about fighting for quality time, making time for each other. Um, I think with the nine of wands upright, this person is going to be probably busy on Valentine's Day itself. With the Seven of Pentacles reverse, this seems to be a situation that has both of you feeling a little unfulfilled due to practical issues getting in the way, which could look like a busy schedule. It could also be that, you know, I've just got other things going on. Right there. No. Oh, silly. I've got other things going on that day and with the seven of pentacles reverse this is about like uprooting and making something else happen so I don't think something is going to happen specifically on that day I think you're both going to have to make time for something later that's what it feels like there probably is going to be an opportunity before but I think something bigger is going to happen after Valentine's Day something more significant in this connection is going to happen after Valentine's Day so where do we want to pivot to from here Oops. there's so many more questions I have but it doesn't really follow the theme of Valentine's Day anyway I will ask for advice but there's things that I think I need to ask in the extended. I've been asking specific things for the other groups in the extended as well as getting channeled messages. So for you, I want to have a look at can you trust this person? Especially if this is a newer connection. Can you trust this person? And we will see where that takes us. But I think it would also be good to look at what is next in the connection too. The extended reading ends up being so much longer nowadays, which I'm not mad at because it is a paid reading. So you're definitely getting value for your money. Um, but in your extended, we'll have a look at can you trust this person? What is next in the connection? As well as channeled messages what your higher self thinks about this person and what your spiritual team thinks about this person. Right now, I'm going to close your YouTube Valentine's Day reading off with some advice for you. I will be pulling tarot as well as oracle cards. Group three, please, spirit. What advice do you have for group three when it comes to this person who wants to be their Valentine? The advice, you have the Queen of Swords in the reversed position. We have the World card in the reversed position. 
of advice do you have? Oh, we got the Wheel of Fortune trying to come out. This card was chewed on by the noisy dogs that were just barking. What else, Spirit? One more card. Okay. My last card for you is the Queen of Pentacles again. So that Earth sign energy is really strong in your reading. You could identify as an Earth sign. Well, identify like you can choose. But Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. At the back of the deck is King of Cups. Actually, I heard that it could be dependent based on um, Vedic or um, tropical. So maybe in tropical astrology, you're like a fire sign. But or how would that work, actually? You would probably be an air sign, but in Vedic astrology or sidereal, sidereal, you're um, a earth sign because we do have air and earth here. Sagittarius is very strong in your reading, though. Um, so your primary advice from tarot, from spirit, is to be very open and honest about how you were feeling with the King of Cups. This is also about you creating room for this person to be honest about how they are feeling. Let this person open up and really delve into the depths of what they want to communicate with you. I have a feeling that this is a very um, emotionally open person. It's just about you asking the questions that you need to ask as well like I kind of feel like this person will wear their heart on their sleeve group three they seem to be very emotionally available emotionally open with the queen of swords reversed I also think that this is somebody who you may need to approach with an open mind this feels like you can't judge a book by its cover take time to really understand where this person is coming from before you rule out any information or choose to make a serious decision here the queen of swords can often be very um particular um like in a dating setting the queen of swords and the queen of pentacles have very high standards they are also very quick to kind of rule things out because they probably have a list of, of things that they're looking for. They may also have a list of icks. So I'm thinking like with this person, Queen of Swords reversed, don't be too judgmental, keep an open mind, but also let this person walk the walk and talk the talk, right? Um, the world card reversed is about making sure that we tie up loose ends here, making sure that we are addressing things as we're moving forward, leave no stone unturned. And that can also feel like us making sure that we're living life for us. We're not just going through the motions here and trying to turn this situation into something practical or, or, um, you know, like don't just go through the mechanisms with this person. If you need to identify or communicate, do that. Um, and identify would be like you identifying potential issues. If you have concerns, raise them. It does feel like we need to tie up some sort of loose ends here. And it could be that this connection is happening simultaneously with other things that you've got going on in your life. As Valentine's Day approaches, your advice here is to structure your priorities and to make sure that you aren't neglecting other responsibilities in tandem with this connection there is a way to fit this person and this connection into your other responsibilities if you often feel like your love life is always on the back burner group three then your specific advice is to prioritize your love life in spite of everything else that you've got going on no matter how busy you are, you deserve this. You deserve connection. So with the Wheel of Fortune here, Spirit is saying go ahead. You've got a blessing here, which could feel like um, good fortune. With this person, I think that honestly, based on that energy alone, you probably can trust this person, but I'm going to get more clarity in the extended. It seems that there is some sort of portal opening up for you guys where the energy around you is very positive. It feels like you're experiencing a lot of good karma, a lot of serendipitous moments where things do fall into place if you put yourself out there to receive. Now, with that being said, your advice with the Queen of Pentacles is to be reminded upon, uh, to be reminded about what you are doing this for. Why did you set that intention? What was the purpose? 
what other values that you are looking for or what kind of values are you looking to get fulfilled. The Queen of Pentacles brings that sort of grounded and practical side to the advice of like, well, remember that you have a lot to offer. So what is it that you are seeking as well? Let's see if we can get any closing messages from this beautiful deck. What closing advice do you have for group three? when it comes to Valentine's Day. Okay. The first card I have is I accept all that I have created for myself. And here is what the back of the card says. I am gonna read it out, but pause it if you'd like to read it yourself. This card says, I am a divine magnificent expression of life and I deserve the very best. I accept miracles. I accept healing. I accept wholeness and most of all, I accept myself. Wow. Boosting your esteem, your self-esteem. So it could be about making sure that you are staying open to this being a good, wonderful blessing. We also have I'm in the right place coming out. This could act as confirmation that a certain somebody who was on your mind while I was doing this reading is the person that I'm talking about. Wherever I go and whoever, whomever I meet, I find my own love and my highest good waiting for me. Thinking the best, having a posit positive, optimistic mindset here and assuming that things are going to work out for you because you are in the right place is your closing advice, my group threes. So that is what I'm seeing for you when it comes to who wants to be your Valentine. I hope you found this reading helpful entertaining and mostly confirming especially because this is the group that definitely will be talking to somebody who yeah like you you will probably know who this person is is what i'm trying to say um if this reading did resonate and if you wish to support me and access your extended reading where we will, we will be having a look at can you trust this person who is what is next in this connection sorry extended excuse me we'll be also looking at channeled messages oh my gosh my mouth is not communicating with my brain um, what your higher self thinks and what your spiritual team thinks. So if you would like to access that, your extended reading is linked in the description box. That link will take you to my website, Group 3s. If you're new here, I did go through a weird bug with the host of my website in January. Unfortunately, a lot of extended readings were impacted. I'm still getting back to a lot of people. Um, hopefully this week is the last week of just making sure that everybody has been emailed back and refunded. But basically what had happened was the website, there was some sort of bug. This is how I understand it. That meant when people were paying for the extended readings, it wasn't linked to the reading itself. So thankfully that has been solved. I'm being told that that's not going to happen in the future. Um, it just so happened to impact me and a few other people who host their websites with this website builder. So I'm so deflated talking about this because it's been something that I've been dealing with for the last three weeks, but it's just such a relief to know that it's not an issue anymore. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. If you were impacted, I'm so, so sorry. Hopefully you would have heard from me by now. Um, but if you're new here, rest assured that will not be an issue. The link does take you to my website, as I was saying, where there are over 230 extended reading videos. I think we're at 240 now. So make sure you click on the right group is what I'm saying. You are group three of the Valentine's Day reading. Who wants to be your Valentine 2024? Triple check before you spend any money. As I always say, that is your money. That is your hard earned money. Make sure you know where it's going. Make sure you clicked on the right reading before you buy, before you check out. And before you go, wherever you are going, group three, thank you so much for all of your support, your energy, your time. I really appreciate you for trusting me with your messages. You are a beautiful group to read for. Um, I'm excited to get into your extended. And if this is where we are parting ways, I wish you abundance, joy, happiness, success, health, wealth, and prosperity on your journey ahead. Look after your beautiful selves. Bye.